You got me you got me kissing my hand like Yes. Mm. That's what happens when you make good food, right? I just kinda I just kinda mix and add, Okay. <laughs> it's not just about eating and cooking. It's like you spend time with your food, it's gonna teach you, it's gonna heal you. It's not just a monotonous thing. You're good, that's gonna just I know, right? Just eat the onions by themselves. <laughs> <laughs> Ready, yes. <laughs> hey, you all, welcome back. It's Shelly Wellness and the Mindful Plate. And today we are going to be making the most beautiful vegan lasagna you have ever seen and tasted. And we have a special guest with us. We have Kenja Dixon with us, and we are going to be talking about mindfulness. But not just mindfulness when we're cooking and when we're eating, but how does mindfulness apply to our life, especially in the weight loss process and the body transformation process? Because some of y'all, I know, want to lose weight. Let's get into the video. All right, y'all. So Ken just says that he misses lasagna. And I think, I think, I think that I have this dope vegan lasagna recipe that is going to bring back those memories of all that greasy, meaty, cheesy goodness that he used to remember. Let's see how it goes. We're going to be making the lasagna. Now, I know that a lot of vegan lasagnas can be kind of plant forward. So you're going to see like your mushroom lasagna, your spinach lasagna, the eggplant, all of that stuff. But I wanted to bring it as close to the meaty goodness that you remember. Mm -hmm. And so I made this meat. Now, this is my vegan ground beef. I did an entire video on this. So if you want the recipe for the veggie ground beef, check the link in the description and you can get that. So I made this beef, right? But it's not beef, it's obviously, right? Our veggie grounds. So We're gonna try this just by itself. I'm gonna give you a little bit. Mm -hmm. You got that? Yes. And then you tell me what's going on. Mmm. Wow. But it's really good. And mm -hmm. it does give me a memory of some good, nice beef. Yes. What we have in here is we have some mushrooms because mushrooms do a really good job of giving that meaty texture. We have lentils because lentils also kind of create a ground beefy texture as well as a bit of the flavor. And we have walnuts. Walnuts mm. really, really do a good job of standing in for a meaty texture. So I use the plain oyster mushroom. And then there's this company, Valentine & Co., and they make a bacon oyster mushroom. Mm. And so it has that pork sausage flavor. And I remember when I used to make lasagna, I would use pork sausage and beef sausage and mix the two together. Mm. So that's what we got going on here. Wow. I know, right? Exciting. So now another component of lasagna that we have is ricotta cheese. I have this cream cheese that I make. It's a vegan cream cheese, and it does a good job standing in for ricotta. I made this before in a previous video, and in that previous video, if you're looking for how to make this, it's called vegan cream cheese, and so this particular video shows how to make this cheese, but this is a great stand-in. Anytime you need a cream cheese, a goat cheese, a ricotta cheese, any type of spreadable creamy cheese, this is a perfect vegan substitute for that. So this cheese is made from sunflower seeds and pine nuts, a little bit of salt and lemon, but I'm gonna let you try it and tell me what you think. Wow, you said sunflower seeds? Sunflower seeds and pine nuts. Mmm, I do not think about them sunflower yes. seeds that you throw in my mouth. <laughs> that you, you know, crackle and yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't think, that does not come to mind. Wow. Right? That's good, right? Powerful, I yes. know, I, so we're gonna take all of this and we're gonna layer it, but first, I think the key to a good lasagna is our sauce. So you ready to make the sauce? Yes. Let's do it. For our sauce, we're gonna use a base of sauce. So we're gonna start with some tomatoes, some onions, and then we have our flavor mix in. So we have some minced garlic here. This has been frozen. If you ever have garlic that you feel like you're not gonna be able to use, you could just mince it and put it in the freezer and just the flavor's all there. This is also some basil or basil. Sometimes you get too much basil, you're not gonna use it. You can put in the freezer, chop it up. So this is basil as well. Mm. And then we have this kind of Italian sofrito mix. So this is like dried herbs and seasonings that we're going to reconstitute in our pot. That's gonna add flavor. And then of course to top it off, add some salt to bring out all the flavor. So to get started, we're gonna add our tomatoes mm. and our onions to our blender. Yeah, there we go. Now that knife is sharp, so be yes, careful yeah, of. Yeah, oh, oh, wait, 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 wait. You just gotta scare me, scare me, get you. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> You got this? Yes, yes. You got yes, this? Okay. Yes, yes. I don't want any blood on my set. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be scared myself now. All right, there we go. Let me just do it that way. Oh, man. Yes, thank you so much, though, for. Oh, yeah. 
So let's see. So we got that. Now some I mean, people all can all of them. All of them. We're gonna use all these tomatoes because they break down pretty easily. So we need we need enough to make sure we have enough for the lasagna. Okay. And if you don't want to use fresh tomatoes, y'all, you can use the canned tomatoes. But if you have fresh tomatoes, definitely use them. I feel like a chef with this you knife should. right here. I know. So this knife is a company uh, based here in Brooklyn, mm -hmm. and they were so wonderful and gracious to gift me with this knife. So I have been using it, and it has made my cooking so much easier because the blade is on point. I never have to worry about it going dull, and it's precise, and it holds well. Like, it's just ergonomically, you know, it fits. And I have small hands, so sometimes knives can be overpowering, but shout out to, to Missing Knives. All right, let's add onion to that. Mm -hmm. This is half of a white onion. And then we're gonna add in some garlic. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, and then we're gonna add in the basil or the basil. Have you ever made sauce from scratch? No, ma'am. No, how do you normally do your, your sauce? No, I don't, I, you raw. I'm, I've been raw now for the last two and a half years. Oh, and then I use baking. So baking used to be, but everything used to be store-bought. Yeah. yeah. Store -bought. Oh, so this, okay. So yeah, you're like a, a version of this. This is mm -hmm. exciting. All right. But anytime you want to make a tomato sauce, we'll always start with tomatoes and onions. And then you can add in some bell peppers, some garlic, some herbs, some peppers. And then you start with that. So... Perfect. Don't take long because it's a Vitamix. Vitamix mm, does not mm. play. I'm going to so, get this on. Mm. Pour in some oil. Okay. Now, in terms of how much oil you use, I don't want this to be super oily, so I'm using just enough so that it doesn't stick. Just enough to cover the bottom. Okay. And what, remember, when you blended this, you still have all those fiber pieces in there. So we don't want the fiber to be sticking to the bottom as this water sweats off. But what's going to happen is it's going to kind of reduce down. And as it reduces, that flavor is going to kick in. Yeah. So one of the things I think is really important when you are making the sauce, taste it at each step so you see where you're at and what you need to add. So let's give this a try. All right. So you take one and I'll take one. All right. Man, all oh, this is so good to be. <laughs> like I just came home. <laughs> This is our first cooked meal in a long time. So it's super light so far because we haven't added all our seasoning to that pot yet, right? Mm. So what we want to do is because when I make sauce, I don't like my sauce to just be saucy. I like a little chunk in there. Okay. Right? It, it gives, just gives us something more to bite into. So I'm going to add a little bit of some chopped onion and kind of brown that. Here you go. Mm -hmm. Just give that a stir around. Mmm. Whenever I make a sauce, I always like to start with some onions in the pan. There's nothing like just the flavor of cooking onions in the house. And for them to brown, I should let them... Yeah, you can let them sit. sit. Okay. We just want to stir it just to get enough oil on them. But once okay. you have them coated, let them sit, do their thing. You know, it's like when you plant a seed, you don't just keep t tilling that's the land, right? Right? Uh -huh. <laughs> right? Like, you just got to let it sit, let hey, God yeah. do his thing, and okay. It'll, it'll come up when it's ready. So Kendra, one of the things that I like to do when I'm cooking is I know that a lot of times we take shortcuts, right? Because we don't have a lot of time, we're busy. But I think that there's something about spending time with your food that really makes you appreciate where it comes from. And this is the art of mindful eating and mindful cooking. So mm. we have some oregano here. We're going to be adding this to the sauce. And can you help me take these pieces of leaves off? And we're just going to put them in here. And we're going to be adding these eventually. But I think that, you know, spending time with cooking really allows you to, to understand that everything takes a process. You know, we were talking earlier about feeling like sometimes you can get caught in a rat race. Mm -hmm. and you're trying to rush and get to where you're going. Have you ever felt like there are times where you are trying to keep up or get ahead and you're not even taking time for the present moment? Mm, and that's where that anxiety comes into play not living in the present so creativity levels lower yeah. and that's what the monotony of uh just and, I, and I, I i think we all have been there or are there right now but i, I really remember in it and then feeling anxious or waking up to punch the clock even though i don't want to be there or eating this food that gives me the itis that I <laughs> like feel like that's a part of what life is. You know what I mean? I was there. So, no, I get it. And it's like, man, I didn't feel right until I was filled to 
the max. Yeah. And it's like, wow, so I get it. It's a program that has to be reprogrammed. Well, this is not going to be one exactly. of them. This meal is full of life, full of vitality. Mm -hmm. So we have these onions, and they look very soft. And this is one of the things I love. I think food teaches us so much about life. So, you know, oftentimes we're walking around here, we're stressed, we're anxious, and we just need to be relaxed. Mm. And we need something to soften us and open us up. Mm. And oftentimes heat is what does that. Ah. You get a massage, you go into a sauna. So these onions have been well massaged. You look at them. They just yeah, kind of like, they're ready, ready, right? They Don't they? Mm -hmm. Wobbly. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. So we're going to eat some of that relaxed energy. So this is our sofrito seasoning mix. It's a dried spice mix, and it's okay. just different Italian spices. So if you have Italian seasoning at home, you could use that as well. And then just stir that in as you go. Ooh. Yeah. So we like to add the dry spices in at this stage. We're mm -hmm. going to add some in later, but we add in at this stage with the onions because this is essentially the seasoning mix for this sauce. Mm. So this sauce has a little bit of seasoning and a little bit of garlic and basil, but you know, we, we like our seasoning, right? So we, we want to make sure that the pot is seasoned. Mm. So we add in the onions, add in this dry seasoning mix, and then we add in our sauce and then that's going to sit. They're going to marry each other. This is going to reduce. And then we come back and we try it and see what's going on and how we need to adjust it. Wow. And what this is making me think about mm -hmm. is what we were talking about is if our foundation, mm -hmm. if the bottom of the pot, Hello. the ingredients not mixed right and the taste is off, right. what we pour on top of it, 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 it might, it might, it might <laughs> suffice. Hello. But if it's not, if it's not, we got, sometimes we got to empty out the whole pot. That's it. Start all over and again. And start all over. Wow. Yeah. This we is so We need a solid powerful. foundation. Mm, mm, yes. Mm. This is mindful cooking at its best. This the food is, is, a, is a, the food is a healer. It's a teacher. Thank Absolutely. You. So beautiful. Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just keep that motion. Keep stirring. And it's a process. It takes time, but you're going to get that rich, beautiful, red Italian tomato sauce. Wow. Yeah. So we're just going to let that do its thing. And while that sauce is doing its thing, I think we should make some salad to go with our lasagna. Mm, what do you think? Yes. We need like some fiber, plan. right? Yeah. Yeah. Sounds yeah, like a plan. Yeah, let's do that. All right. Mm -hmm. So we have our cucumber here. Now, this is an organic uh, cucumber. This is organic tomato and organic uh, yellow bell pepper and organic spinach. Now, real quickly, the reason why we're using organic versus conventional is because with these particular vegetables, we eat the skin. So we want to minimize our chemical load. So if we were saying using onions, for example, as you see, onions, they have uh, outer protection and they grow under the ground. So there's less of a chemical load on this. Whereas these are all above ground, and so when growers are growing and they're using conventional means, which is pesticides, that's going to get them all of this. We don't want it. So we're going to go ahead, and because we have the skin on it, we're getting organic, but just because it's organic doesn't mean that it doesn't have chemicals on it. This means that it has less chemicals. So what we're going to do is we're going to peel off some of the skin, but we're going to keep some as well because there's nutrients in there. So Kendra and I are going to make a salad dressing. Kendra, have you ever made salad dressing before? Some mustard. Okay. <laughs> That's the wait. You just put mustard on your salad. Yeah, yeah, mustard. Literally. Really? Yes. That's different. Okay. So we're gonna use some mustard, but mustard is only because it's gonna help us emulsify. We're gonna just a basic vinaigrette. We have some olive oil. We're gonna use a balsamic vinegar because I think that'll go nice with the lasagna. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna add in some. I never know how to pronounce this. Herbs de Provence. Herbs de Provence. Anyways, this is delicious seasoning from France. So let's go. Now, in terms of measurements, don't ask any questions. I don't know. I really don't. This is just something that, again, it's a vibe. Now, there are lots of vinaigrette uh, recipes, but for me, I just get in and I just start doing a thing because that's mindful cooking. So I'm going to add a little bit of mustard. Sounds good. That's for sure. Let's see how it tastes. Now that's the real thing. Oh, it's nice and thick. Let's see how it tastes. Do 
Mm -hmm. I like it. Oh, wow. That make those vegetables come alive, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, you know what it needs? Just, just a touch. It's a touch of sweetness to kind of, because at the end, I don't know if you feel it, but at the end, there's like the, uh, there's like a bit of a tart from mm -hmm. that, from that vinegar. So we're gonna add just, just a hint of maple syrup. We don't want it sweet. We just want to knock out that mm. feeling. Yeah, let's do that. Do you, do you taste what I'm talking about? Yeah, I got it. That's yeah. What I'm talking about. Okay. So we're just gonna add. Teeny, ticky, licky, 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 teeny, 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 teeny. Drop. Boom. Wow. That's it. That's all we need. One more time. Yeah, get in there. Get that wrist action. By the way, I didn't mean to tell you, I love your arm jewelry. This is nice. Mm -hmm. What's going on here? There's a language going on. I got Can we get a close up of this? It's so beautiful. You know what it says? China, no, I just saw okay, it sir. And, and thought it was like, I hope it's I hope saying, it's saying you're blessed. something good, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like back in the day, people were getting tat uh, Chinese tattoos. Remember that in the late 90s, early 2000s? Mm -hmm. You know what that said? Nah, I just thought it looked cool. Okay. Nah, that's nice though. Okay, taste it. Let's see what, what is, what's, this, what's it talking about. You got me, got me kissing my hand like. Yes. Mm. That's what happens Beautiful. when you make good food, right? Mm -hmm. Beautiful, beautiful. And this is enough. We don't need more because we're just trying to dress them. We don't want to overpower the salad because yes. it has its own natural flavor. That's right. That's right. Turn it over. You ever massage your salads before? Mm mm. Oh yeah. That's. I think that's the best way to get dressing. When you massage the salad, you end up using less dressing. But if you just pour dressing over it, then you end up using more because you don't get all the surface area covered. So we're just gonna kind of pour this over. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure we get all of it. So take a leaf. Yep. And then we're just going to get in. And this is you just a massage. Just kind of massage the lettuce and the veggies. And that way everything gets dressed. And you see how much how much dressing was that? Probably That's like fine. two tablespoons. It wasn't a lot. And dressing is where you tend to get most of your fat from anyways. That's right. That's but you fine. don't need a lot. Mm, mm, just mm. enough to dress everything and cover it. Game. Game, right? game, game. Right? She is putting us <laughs> onto the game. <laughs> wow. Try that. I thought I was. I thought I knew what I was doing in the kitchen. <laughs> mm -mm. Mm. That's nice. Yes. That's our salad done. So what you'll find when you're making your sauces, you might be trying to figure out what temperature to have it on. So it depends on the texture. If you want a more loose, runny sauce, then you can just go ahead and keep it on a low heat. But if you want your sauce to be a little thicker and have some bite to it, then you want to evaporate a lot of that liquid out. So what I like to do is I turn the heat up and as you see, it's a volatile boil. And so it's boiling, it's boiling, as you see little pockets and that's all that liquid escaping out. Once it reduces a bit and you see it's darkening in color as well because so much of that liquid has come out. So as it reduces, you get a thicker sauce and you also get a more concentrated flavor. And you know I love flavor. So then once I get it to the texture I want, I turn that heat down to a simmer and I let all those flavors come together, get married, hang out. And then I come back later on and adjust it with whatever I think is missing, a little bit of garlic and of course salt, because you know salt amplifies the flavor. So you want to give things a taste at every stage. Mm -hmm. And you know, our sauce has reduced quite a bit. It's darkened. And so we're probably gonna have to add something else. We didn't put any salt in here yet, but let's okay. just try it out and see what we got going on. Okay. Oh, you bold. You mm -hmm. didn't even blow it. You just took it straight like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. That's what happens when you recreate. <laughs> Listen, recreation is you can take mm -hmm. the heat. Mm. Wow. Oh yeah, that's nice. Boom. Mm. You wanna add some oregano? Now we're not gonna add all of it yet. You know, yeah, I was about that. to throw it all you know in there. Yes. <laughs> okay. Let's let's take some of this and then we're gonna give it a, a little chop because what happens is yeah. we tore off the leaves, but when you actually break them or tear them or chop them, you ever mowed a lawn before? Mm hmm. You know, when you mow the lawn, you can smell that smell of grass. Yes. So it's like, it's fresh. It's a fresh cut. And so you can, the flavor really comes out. The scent comes out. So it's the same with herbs. When it's on its own, you can kind of smell it. But if you rub it, agitate it, or break it, right? It's, it's like, it's on there. So, okay. so we're going to just give it a quick little chop. 
because we want that freshly scented oregano flavor to just go right in there. Wow. Um, go ahead and stir that up, babe. And then that heat is going to intensify it. Mm. Okay. Ah. So now we're going to bring up the flavor. Now, I didn't add any salt in the beginning because I think that when you're making sauce, you just want to let what's natural do its thing. So now we're going to add the salt. Add some salt. All right, let's go and give that a nice mix. Go ahead, mix, 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 mix it in, mix it in. You are in your purpose, Miss mm. Kelly. Goodness gracious, I feel the mastery <laughs> bubbling out from you. You teaching me. Thank you. Oh, good thing. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Mm. I think that might be it. I don't know. Let me see. I don't know how you're taking it. I'm, looking, I'm turning red. This is hot. <laughs> mm. That's a yes. Yes, I mean it was good from the from the first from the onions to me. <laughs> All of this is it's just getting better and better. So no, this was this is really good. Mm, wow, this is nice. This is nice. I like it. I like. What it. I like about the way you're doing this is you're building it as you go. It's not just a set situation. Mm -hmm. So taste testing it as it develops. Exactly. This is not the Instapot, y'all. Mm. This is like old school, over the fire, mindful attendance to your cooking. Mm -hmm. That's how your grandma does it. Yes. And that type of cooking will never go out of style. I don't care how many gadgets come in. Once you have a pot and some fire, you're good to go. Goodness gracious. <laughs> standing applause. <laughs> I mean, uh, wow. Because you don't want this to dry out, we're mm -hmm. gonna put a covering over this. Okay. So I know a lot of people will use foil directly. I don't like foil to touch my food because aluminum is not good for us. Oh. It shouldn't be ingested by the human body, but it is so helpful in cooking. Trust me, I know. So what I normally do is I put parchment paper over first and then I put that aluminum over the parchment paper. Mm. See, not too tight. Cause if there's some steam we wanted to be able to escape, but we want to kind of trap in some of that uh, moisture bacon. Then we're going to put it in the oven. Especially mm. if it's good. Great. This job, is good. Charlie. 
Great job, Kendra. Mm. This is good. Mm. 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 Mm-hmm. Thank you, bro. This meal is a primary example of what I believe we need to do in life. Get the right ingredients for the dish that we want to make in our life and follow it. And and I like what you did. You 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 adjusted as you went on. So with our lives, let's just be realistic. We don't have to accept any results if it doesn't taste the way we like it. We can always up the ante and come up with another type of recipe. That's right. Yeah. Well, you all, thank you so much. You have been watching The Mindful Plate. I'm Shelly Wellness, and this is Kendra Dixon. If you don't have the book Recreationism, please get it. And Kendra, where can they find you? Kendra Dixon, just Google, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook. I'm just starting this journey, and I'm really honored to be a servant to humanity. He's being humble. He's been on this journey. He's not just starting. KendraDixon.com. Yes, indeed. All right, y'all. I'll see you next time. And as always, if you want the recipe, join a newsletter, TheMindfulPlate.tv. Be well, y'all. Mwah. Mm. Bless her. Did you like that? Good. Because in the next video, Kenji and I sit down and talk about his experience losing weight, transforming his body, the decision that ultimately helped him be successful on his journey from 300 pound plus Kenja to the Kenja you see now. Click the link in the bio and we'll see you in the next video.